Hey, what's up everyone? This is Backpraise. Thank you very much for tuning in. In today's video, we are going to see how we can create our own chatbot from scratch in Python, where we can store a bunch of questions and corresponding answers to that. But first, what is chatbot? A chatbot is an artificial intelligence powered piece of software in a device. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with Siri, Alexa, Google Assistant, and so on. It could be an application, it could be a website or other networks that try to measure consumers' needs and then assist them to perform a particular task like a hotel booking or form submission. The history of chatbots dates back to 1966 when a computer program called ELISA was invented by Weizenbaum. It imitated the language of a psychotherapist from only 200 lines of code. And I will show you how to create ELISA as well in this tutorial. But first, let me tell you how chatbots work. There are broadly two variants of chatbots, rule-based and self-learning. Rule-based, the bot answers questions based on some rules on which it's trained on. The rules defined can be very simple to very complex. The bots can handle simple queries but fail to manage complex ones. The second variant, which is self-learning bots, on the other hand, are the ones that use some machine learning based approaches. Even these bots have two subcategories. First category, retrieval based. Retrieval based, where a chatbot uses some heuristic to select a response from a library of predefined responses. Generative, they can generate the answers and not always replies with one of the answers from a set of answers which makes them more intelligent. We are going to create a rule-based simple bot today. And if you like this video, I will show you how to create a smart chat bot. Now, let us jump to Visual Studio Code and see how we can write our own chat bot. So let's see what we can do now. First thing we need to do here in our code, we need to import a library called NLTK, which is very important. It stands for Natural Language Toolkit. So we will import chat from nltk.chat.util. We need to import chat with a capital C. Next thing we need to do, we need to define a variable called pairs and it's a list. And this list contains the answers and the questions basically. So we will predefine them. So let's say for example, my name is, but we need to put that in quotes like that. My name is Beck Brace. So this is a question or an information uh, or a greeting rather. And I want the program to answer. So if this part right here is what I'm saying to the program, what comes after the comma is the answer by the system. So again, inside the list, inside quotes, and we will add an answer. We'll say hi, Beck, Brace, like that. So this is the, the second thing that we need to do. The third thing we need to do is we need to create another variable, we'll call it chat. And this variable called chat equals to the module chat. And inside here, we will pass the pairs, the questions and the answers, or the info and the replies that we have added. And the last thing we need to do is we need to access a method called converse. So we will take this chat variable and we will let it converse. So now let's take a look what that program looks like. So I'll type Python chat.py. Right. So if I will say my name is Beck Brace, I'll get an answer. Hi, Beck Brace. But if I will say anything else, my name is John Doe, it gives me none because it's not predefined here in the list. 
okay so this is now a problem because you want to type your name and you want to get a reply uh, with your name so in order to solve this problem we will use the regular expressions so we'll need to get out of the program we will put this down like that and we will need to work a little bit on our code so instead of making it static by saying my name is back brace we will now delete back brace we will open parentheses like that and dot all or dot asterisk like that and likewise in the answer I will delete back brace with the exclamation mark and ampersand one All right control s to save that but there is another thing that we need to add in import from chat library we need to import something called reflections and reflections simply is predefined set of um, data and answers or um, a form of addressing and answers to that for example I am you are um, uh, I have you have and I will show you what reflections look like now if we will print reflections and I will comment the last line out and now let's take a look to what reflections look like so there it is it's a dictionary it has set of the these I am you are I was you were I you am um, you are and so on you can certainly create another dictionary which is very customized to yourself you can add whatever questions and answers or um, addressing forms with the repl corresponding replies and you can pass it also here but for now we will stick to our standard reflections all right so as we have added reflections we need to add them here also we need to pass them as a second argument inside our um, chat so reflections like that all right okay and we will uncomment the last line and now let's try again our program my name is john doe and now we have john doe hi john doe uh, my name is Sarah Smith hi Sarah Smith okay so I think the idea is pretty clear now I will copy and paste some um, predefined uh, questions and answers just for the time so we will put them uh, here and I will zoom out a little bit for you to see so my name is and then you have also predefined like hey there good day to you um, these are the um, forms of greetings and these are the answers and so on and you can do anything you want with that really it's it's really simple so let's exit the program and let's run it again and now let's say hi say we get a reply bonjour we say hello we say for example good morning good day to you there you go different reply um, we say uh, bonjour for example also bonjour hey also bonjour hello howdy all right so let's try another um, 
another thing. Let's say, for example, the weather is good. Nothing. Because I didn't try today. So let's try that again. The weather is the weather today is great. Indeed, the weather is great, great today because you see here the and the uh, dot and the asterisks here, the same also like placeholders. And um, one and percent one and percent two because this is the second uh, thing that we need to substitute, the second placeholder that we need to um, substitute for for the corresponding word who created you by brace my father and use an ltk module to do it so this is the idea simply it's a very few very few lines of code basically they are two or three no one two there are four lines of code uh, of course you will need to pass inside here um, the questions and the answers um, you need to work on it's kind of like a script you need to work on it and now i'm going to show you elisa you remember in the presentation we have talked about elisa which has been created between the years 1964 and 1966 in the mit and 99 of these 200 lines of codes were uh, predefined um, answers to the questions okay so let me show you what elisa looks like the first thing that you notice inside our source code is importing the library or the module of nltk.chat.util. We are importing the chat and reflections. The second thing you notice that pairs is no more in the form of a list, but rather in a tuple. So inside that tuple, we have predefined questions and answers, and we have the R or row string and the row string comes handy to help us finding quickly um, the corresponding answers to our questions. So these placeholders here, I need something, and, and we have, why do you need this thing? The exact same thing is repeated over and over and over in all the tens of lines of code. Um, you see, it's more than, I don't know, 200. Yeah, it's more than 200 lines of code. And all these are predefined questions and answers for a psychiatrist. And I will show you what the program looks like after we finished um, reading together the source code. So it continues by asking more questions and um, getting more answers. And we have quit at the end. When you type quit, it gives you one of these three answers or replies in a random way, really. All right, and this is the end of the tuple. The next thing we have here, and we are pretty familiar with it, we have another variable called Elisa underscore chatbot, and it is equal to our chat module and passing inside the pairs, which is everything uh, we have seen here above, comma, and the reflections. And we have seen what reflections are. The next thing, we are defining a variable called Elisa chat. Really, you can do it differently, but this is pretty structured. A function called Elisa underscore chat, when it's invoked, it prints these lines right here. And by the end of the print statements, we have the Elisa underscore chatbot dot converse, the main method that plays everything. It's the main orchestra maestro, basically. And we have a second function called demo. When invoked, it calls for the Elisa underscore chat function. And by the end of the code, if name equal to main, we invoke demo. When invoke demo, we invoke the Elisa underscore or chat. And when this is invoked, 
we run the main um, Elisa underscore chatbot variable uh, with the converse method. All right, so it's pretty clear. Now let me show you what the program looks like. So I think it's better to open it through the git bash. There you go. I will type python elisa.py. All right. So the first thing that you will notice is it tells you explicitly what to do. So it tells you to talk to the program by typing in plain English. So it defines the language should be English using normal upper and lowercase letters and punctuation. If you want to quit the program, simply enter quit when done. So we have a simple greeting. Hello, my name is Elisa. How are you feeling today? Let me say, I say, I feel great. Do you often feel great? You say, no, when only I eat ramen. Very interesting. If I said, thank you, please tell me more about what please consider whether you can answer your own question okay please tell me more I feel happy for example when you feel happy what do you do I um, eat <laughs> why do you say that you eat um, if I'm done with this, I can type simply quit, enter, and goodbye. And we exited the program. So it's really basic. It's really simple. You can do the same program. Uh, I will leave the source code in the description section below. You can check it out later. You can also uh, create your own program, your own chatbot. Um, you can create, I don't know, a financial advisor or a tax consultant. Um, you can really create whatever you like in a simple way. This is a simple chat bot um, created on a rule based approach. Uh, it has a set of predefined questions and answers using the regular expression. All right. Um, and you can also create a GUI interface for it. Um, if you don't know how to do that, I am probably going to create uh, another quick video to show you how you can create a GUI interface using the tkinter module. All right, so I hope this video was uh, helpful to you. If you liked it, please leave a like. If you didn't subscribe, please consider subscribing. And uh, thank you very much for watching this video. I'll see you in another video. Till then, stay safe and be well.